But what I really want to talk to you guys was this one. This one is very, very important. Very, very important. So same thing. If we're trying to do g of f of x, right? So g of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared minus 3. Right? So therefore, if I want to do g of f of x, all I'm doing is plugging in f of x. Yes? And f of x is defined here as square root of x plus 1 squared minus 3. And the square root of something squared is just x plus 1 minus 3. So the answer is x minus 2. Now, if I was asking that on a multiple choice question, most students would probably get to that correct answer. Well, I mean, once they practice composition. But then I attach the domain to it. And this is where students don't get the right answer. Because you guys look at this answer, and it would make sense to you that this is a linear equation or a linear function. So we'd say the domain is all real numbers. Correct? Right? I mean, I guess I'm trying to trick you, but that makes sense, right? At least it's supposed to make sense. But the question is, is here, here, let me bring this up to you. All right, so I have blue eyes. My wife has really dark, beautiful Italian eyes, right? We have two daughters. Our two daughters both have blue eyes, all right? Now, let's say when they, they have children and they, let's say they um, have children um, you know, with a guy that has blue eyes as well. You guys all understand from at least biology that it's not guaranteed that their children are also going to all have blue eyes, right? They could possibly have my wife's dark black, brown eyes, not black eyes, brown eyes, right? Because that's how the gene system works. So just because you have your blue eyes, you're still carrying those brown eye genes, correct? Right? You all understand that as far as your biology class. All right. So what I'm trying to bring to you guys is, f of x is restricted. You can't plug in any number for f of x. Agreed? You can't plug in any number that's less than negative 1. The domain restriction on f of x is negative 1 to infinity. Just because you take that function and plug it into another function doesn't mean that goes away. OK? Just because my children have blue eyes doesn't mean they're not carrying their their mother's brown eye gene. Yes, I mean, that makes sense. So what I'm trying to tell you is just be, like look at this function. Without any simplifying, do you guys still see how, how it's restricted? But what happened is I just simplified it. I just algebraically simplified this so I, don't, so I don't have to do any more operations. But we can't just say, oh, the simplified version doesn't have any restrictions. Yo, yes, it does. It does have restrictions. It's restricted by negative 1 to infinity. But it's confusing if you just look at that and say, oh, that's a restriction. That doesn't make any sense. But if you look at that, oh, yeah, that is the restriction, right? Or look at the original equation. So the last thing to take away from composition of functions is you have to take into account the function you're plugging in to the composition as well as the simplified result. And there are some really, really interesting equations we could get into, um, but we're not going to get into, at least with in this chapter, or at least this section. We'll, um, we'll study those a little bit later.